G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday morning here in Australia, so obviously Tuesday evening stateside and the market is down again. So, again, there is a lot of panic in the moment. And look, what we can do is let's go have a look. Where is the fear and greed index? What are we at right now? Whew, 14, so again, extreme fear. And look, I predict that we're going to stay in extreme fear for quite some time. Uh, in all fairness now it's not the lowest it's been it's been down at 10 but I think 10 which we were at not that long ago like only maybe a few days ago to a week ago is the lowest I think that's ever been so look it's a scary time and again it's hard to invest when things are like this so particularly when you come over here and seven days red 24 hours you know a lot of red the last hour a lot of red and all these charts just like this I understand now again, I never offer you financial advice. I'm only offering you my personal opinion and what I'm doing. And I'm still buying. I'll just keep DCAing uh, till the cows come home. Like There's just nothing that's going to stop me from keep dollar cost averaging into the projects that I really like. And at the moment, not too many alts just because the market uh, is so unsure. But Bitcoin, yep won't stop DCAing. The only time I'll stop DCAing into Bitcoin is when, he, is when it's breaking into new all-time highs. And even then, I'll probably still put a little bit into Bitcoin, but I'll mainly be focusing on the alts because that means, you know, you are guaranteed in the next uh, bull market and things are going to get crazy. So until really Bitcoin starts to show some uptrend, uh, I won't be playing with too many of the alts at all. A little bit of Ethereum. I still believe in Ethereum. Cardano, still believe in Cardano. And possibly uh, some Polygon. But look, even Polygon's getting hit now. And, you know, there's not anything that's not being hit. Anyway, let's move on. We're going to have a look at a few things. So the market cap, still above, above 1.5 trillion. Now, 1.5 trillion in total market cap, I think, is a real key support level. We'll have to see if that can hold. If it doesn't, then yeah, I think things will probably get uh, a little bit uh, bearish after there. And look, again, we may be in a bear market. I don't think we are. I think we're in a bearish trend with an overall within an overall bull market. But look, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. All right, Bitcoin dominance has dropped below 40%. ETH dominance has risen a little bit. And gas prices, 12. Wowee. We literally have not seen that in a very long time. Single digit gas prices is where we want it. But the flip side is the reason why we're getting that at the moment. And it's because crypto is just a bearish place to be at the moment. Uh, a lot of people are getting out and they're panic selling. Uh, you know, yeah, it's tough at the moment. It really is tough. What else can you say? But anyway, we're going to have a look at that and, you know, have a look at are things as bad as what, you know, they may appear on the, on the surface. All right, so Bitcoin down to 33,000. Again, we've been lower. We were lower not that long ago. We were down at 32,000. We wicked down to 28,000. So again, we're just in a ranging motion at the moment. Over the seven days, it's gone down, but uh, a little bit longer. Again, we'll have a look. Uh, Ethereum not holding too bad, still at 2,500. So again, it's been higher. It was 40... Uh, 200 for a while there. Tether uh, doing nicely, <laughs> holding pretty steady around a dollar, you know, up sometimes uh, and down sometimes, but pretty stable around a dollar. But look, again, there's some mixed bags. All right, has anything done really well in the last 24 hours? There was one coin I looked at before that definitely had. There we go, Singularity Net, out of nowhere, 161% rally. Theta Fuel, 20%, Amp. Uh, 18%, Kasama, Helium, Curve, Solana. So look, there are some tokens that are up, but again, it's a lot of uh, just fluctuating prices, really. Things going up and down and sort of all over the place. Uh, Safe Moon still in there. Uh, pretty funny, and you know, people are saying that Safe Moon was going to uh, go to a, a dollar, I think some people were saying. So anyway, not saying it couldn't. I mean, Doge, you know, got pretty close. But look, I mean, you know, even Doge isn't doing that well at the moment. All right, what about losses? What's been hit the worst in the last 24 hours? All right, Internet Computer. Again, this was hundreds of dollars uh, at one stage uh, and now well under $100. Uh, Nexo got hit pretty bad, Filecoin, but again, Filecoin's still up for the last seven days, but definitely down overall. I mean, I think this was two, three hundred dollars 
uh, at a point there. Sheena Ibu getting Sh- Shiba Inu getting absolutely uh, caned at the moment. Uh, Celsius, look, a-, a lot of coins, but you know, there's only really kind of two really bad, uh, and not even really bad, but you know, good, not good. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what the word, but but. Uh, Again, not decent size losses, but that's just the word I'm going to run with. I don't know how else to say, you know, some reasonable size losses, uh, you know, again, getting up in those double digits and then generally just sort of single digit sort of losses. So, you know, one really amazing gain and a couple of okay gains. But then again, generally, the market is down, you know, minus 2.1%. So overall, generally down. But look, down 2.1% is not a lot. Uh, but again, losses still hurt full stop. All right, so what I want to do is let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin market and have a look at some of the things. So again, we had some bullish divergence happening. And look, it's still happening at the moment. Even though the market's coming down, really oversold, it said. Really oversold. Still sort of oversold and uh, still sort of oversold as well. So these are getting higher And that means there is people buying. So there's pushing it up and it's getting to basically a bit of a crescendo here. So what's going to happen? Because we can also see bearish divergence, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high and lower high. And now they're really kind of getting ready to meet. And then I guess we're going to see what happens. Now, again, we also had some bullish divergence down here. So we had a crossover and things started to look up. But now we can see these lines they look like they might be about to cross. And when they cross, so i.e. when the blue goes under the yellow, that means it's definitely bearish uh, at that time and there's likely more sell-off. But what I wanted to show you was uh, it doesn't always pan out like that. Sometimes you can have it uh, just travel sideways for a while. I can't find it now. I was looking at it uh, just before. Um... I think, yeah, it was basically in here. So it looked like it was going to cross over and it just went sideways for a while. So the blue stayed on top of the yellow and that just traveled sideways for a while before we then went into this big sort of bearish pattern. So basically it was in here. We had something like that. And it is completely possible that Bitcoin does exactly that starts to travel sideways for a while. And I have spoken about this a number of times before. So what I want to look at is, yes, this low happened. Now, look, we've just started a new day, and that's probably something I should focus on. So we can get rid of this for now, and we'll have a look. So what kind of candle did we have for an entire day? Yesterday's candle was an indecision candle with a really big wick to the downside, again, trying to scare people out, but then it just kind of sat there. So the selling pressure at the moment is not outweighing the buying pressure. They're kind of both the same. So it's sitting where it is. Now that was for yesterday. The day before, different story. Selling pressure uh, far outweighed. But again, this low really only came down and wicked at our last low. So again, for me, really, this is the point that I'm looking for. Are we going to break 30,000? And even if we do break 30,000, this is more really what I'm looking for. Do we break 27,000? Now, if a wick comes down below 27,000, I'm not worried. We could have a wick that comes way down into 24,000 for whatever, some, you know, kind of sort of flash crash thing. But really, at the moment, and I said this the other day, I'm not too worried if Bitcoin just keeps doing this kind of stuff for a while before it then starts to make its next move up. Now, what I will worry about, sorry, I didn't want to do that, but anyway, is if it starts to go down that way. That is going to be bearish, absolutely. That will be concerning. But at the moment, I don't have any problem with it seesawing around and chop soaring sort of all over the place and just going sideways. That, to me, says that there's a lot of market manipulation going on and it is an accumulation phase. Now also, we're looking at the daily. This is, you know, what we all really get focused on. How about we zoom out? Have you invested in Bitcoin for the long term or were you here just to quickly flip it and make some, you know, quick millions like most people think they're going to come and do? If that was the case, then that's why you're wrecked because you're not going to be able to stand the volatility. If you're here for the long haul, 
So again, no one's ever lost money at the moment and it could change, we don't know, but at the moment, no one has ever lost money investing in Bitcoin as long as they held for four years. So yes, this hurts at the moment. Yes, it could come down to 20,000, 16,000, who knows? But in four years time, based on history, you're likely going to be well in profit. But do you have those real diamond hands? Are you really here because you believe in Bitcoin, believe in cryptocurrencies, the fundamental change, or are you just basically someone who thought they were gonna come in and make a quick flip? If that's what you were doing, then that's probably why you lost uh, money and you're going to lose even more money and you will likely panic sell at the absolute worst time, i.e. literally the bottom, and you're gonna sell to people like, you know, uh, the big institutions, but also, and I don't like to say this, you're gonna sell to people like me because I'm gonna buy. If you're selling Bitcoin at the moment, I'm buying. And at some stage, I'm gonna start buying more alts and they're probably gonna be at really low prices. And again, you'll probably be panic selling and selling them at a loss. And I'm happy to buy, you know, some alts, not all alts, but you know, specifically the ones I like, I'm happy to buy them off you if you're gonna sell them. Now, not at the moment, I'm not buying uh, any alts really. I'm buying Bitcoin until I know what the market does. But that's the way it is, because I know if I hold for long enough, and I've already done it, I held $800 worth of cryptocurrencies from 2017, and this, and again, I've told the story, it went to 4,200, went down to 330, and that $800 that I invested in 2017 is currently worth a few thousand dollars right now. Now, literally only like maybe sort of, I think maybe $3,000 now, but it's still worth that because I just held and that's what I plan on doing if I have not been able to time the market right. Now, I don't think I've got anything uh, wrong at the moment. Obviously, I can't pick the tops, so I didn't know this was the top, but as long as this doesn't crash back down to sort of 20,000 Bitcoin, then I'm not really too worried. And if it does, then so be it. I continue to dollar cost average because I'm quite confident in four years time, I'll be 10 times better than where I am right now. That's how the market works. Now again, this is the daily. Let's have a look at the weekly and let's look what it's been doing for years. This is 1st of July, 2013. Went up, bear market. Went up, bear market. Went up, it's not really a bear market. It kind of traveled sideways really. We had a bit of a bearish trend uh, and then Obviously the pandemic happened, and since then, we've just been in this massive sort of bull market. Now, could this definitely come back down and retest this? Yeah, it could. But old highs don't always have to be retested. Okay, this one over here, it wasn't retested to the downside, it was tested to the upside, yep, came up, touched it, got a rejection, and then went above it, and we never came back down and retested it. This old high, it did get retested a couple of times. This old high got retested once. This old high never got retested again. This old high got retested once. This old high, it nearly came down and retested it, but not quite. So, you know, that's the thing. A lot of people are saying, well, Bitcoin has to come back down uh, and retest its old all-time high. No, it doesn't. Could it not just retest one of these highs and get close to this high. Yes. Now again, people are saying, oh, well, what happens if you're not invested in Bitcoin and altcoins and things like that? All right, Ethereum. This is the chart for Ethereum for years now. This is the trajectory that it's been on. And Bitcoin's the same. Could it come back down and retest these levels? So $700? Absolutely it could. Will it? I don't know. But even if it does, what is the long-term trajectory? The long-term trajectory is this. So there is $1,800. Uh, $1, no, sorry, that's $18,024. Uh, we don't know exactly when, but that's the trajectory it's following. It's just, are you in the market long enough to see those gains? Do you really have those diamond hands or do you have those paper hands that, you know, again, gets really excited when you're buying here because you think it's going to the moon and then just cries when it gets to here. But again, if you had a bought here, which is near the peak of last time, 
and you're still holding now because you made it through this. So let's say you bought uh, it at $845. It's currently worth $2,490 right now. That is what you need to remember. This, you gotta be here for the long game. You gotta be, because you believe in it, you know, you're here for the long-term gains, you're not here for just the short-term gains. That's the people who are getting wrecked and crying and now panic selling at a loss. And unfortunately, they're gonna come back the next time it's getting to the crazy high prices again. Again, they're gonna buy in at a, you know, at this kind of level, not this price, when it's really peaking going to get to here think they're going to make millions and then this is going to happen and then they're going to sell again they're going to constantly buy in at this level and sell at this level that is the difference between smart money i you know long-term hodlers and people who believe uh and dumb money is dumb money buy here and they just can't hold i.e new money they buy here sell here smart money will buy here as long as they've done the research, believe fundamentally in what they've invested in, and they're not going to worry about this because they know at some stage this is going to be worth this. And then, yes, it's going to correct and maybe come all the way back down to a roundabout where they are right now. But then start to do this. All right, so again, just a couple of stories I want to touch on today. Again, I'm here for the long term, so short term, I don't care what happens. I will just continue to buy. I won't be buying alts at the moment. I'm focusing on the big caps. But when things start to turn, guess what I will then start to focus on is the altcoins because they make the massive gains. But again, you still need to do your research. If you, if you haven't researched what you're into, you don't have to research everything to the nth degree, but have at least some understanding of what it is, what it does, you know, the fundamentals of it, what it's going to disrupt and change, and you know, the team behind it and things like that. But you know, you don't even have to have gone to that level, but that's what really good investors do. They will go to that kind of level. But at least have an understanding of what you'd invest in. Don't just come and chuck uh, money at just any old kind of random thing. And particularly when you're getting outside the top 100, that's when it gets truly risky. All right, so a couple of stories. So I used to say that I really wasn't too worried about, you know, the whole privacy thing, that I didn't really care about, you know, people knowing, uh, you know, how I'm spending my money. And I read this article today and it's something that's happening on Litecoin and Charlie Lee's talking about it and it's opened my eyes to why privacy actually is important. So I won't go through the whole article but it says down here there's some upgrades coming to Litecoin. For money, you want it to be fungible. Any $20 bill uh, you spend should be indistinguishable from any other ones and it's uh, not true today for Bitcoin and Litecoin. If you really look into it, when you're spending coins, you should pick and choose which coin you spend so that it doesn't reveal any private information you don't want it to reveal. And this is what I didn't know about it. So if you get paid $10,000 as a salary, if you use those coins to buy a coffee, then the recipient will see that you have 10,000 in your bank account worth of Bitcoin. See, I didn't even realize this. See, I don't care if people know what I'm spending my money on, but I don't want them to know exactly how much I've uh, got and sort of where it's come from and things like that. Not so much where it's come from. Again, I'm not really too worried about that, but I definitely didn't know people would then know how much money or you know crypto I had. So that is quite scary. Now that's the kind of information that you wanna keep private. Even if you have nothing to hide, financial privacy is important. I now understand this, it's taken me a long time you know, years, because for quite some time I've been saying, I don't care if no people know what I'm spending my money on. And I don't. I don't care if people know what I'm spending my money on. I do care if people know how much I have, though. That is a private business. And, you know, I don't care if the government know how much money I have. They obviously need to for tax purposes and that. But outside of the government, no, I don't want people knowing how much money I have. So I am now understanding of what this whole privacy thing is about it's not that you're trying to hide everything from everyone but there are definitely some parts of the information you don't want people to know and i definitely don't want people to know how much money i have and again it's not because i'm some millionaire or anything but it's just that's private business and it's no one's uh, business but mine and i'm sure everybody else right now would be feeling the same it's not about people knowing how i'm spending my money i really don't care that's not you know any great secret but you know where my money is coming from, 
you know, I, who I work for and who's paying me and things like that. That's no one's business except for mine and obviously the tax man. I don't care about the tax man knowing that kind of stuff. But uh, anyone else, completely agree. So privacy, I'm all about it. And it's good to see that Litecoin uh, with Mimble Wimble and things like that is going to start looking at privacy and then that will obviously make it onto the Bitcoin chain. Because some people may not know, Litecoin is it's not really a fork of Bitcoin. It's sort of a copy of Bitcoin, but it's like a test net. It's a little bit like Kasama for Polkadot. Not quite, not exactly the same, but things that get integrated and work on Litecoin generally make their way over to Bitcoin. So all for it. All right, last but not least. So there is some uh, good news, but it could be bad news as well. Again, you know, the market is just fluctuating all over the place, but you know, the lows haven't got lower than what they were a while ago. Uh, we have had a retest of a low uh, on a wick, but generally it's still just going sideways. But here's some good information. Significant Bitcoin outflows are evident from exchanges, but also from BTC investment products. This brings both good and bad news. So we go down here and we have a look at this chart. So net transfer volume, Bitcoins being taken off exchanges not being put on to be sold, that's the green one. So they're coming onto the exchanges to be sold. Scary, and again, not that long ago, a whole st stack came on, and so that's why we've had this big mad sell-off. But now look what has happened. This is the lowest it's, it's been uh, in all year. All year, that means a ton of Bitcoin have been taken off the exchanges, i.e. they are being bought and taken away. It's just the selling pressure has been so large. But are we now going to come to the exhaustion point for the sellers where all of a sudden the buyers start to take over? Now that doesn't mean, and I'm not saying that that means we're suddenly going to rocket upwards, but it just means maybe we do start to just sort of consolidate sideways. And yes, we may come down and sort of, you know, breach below that $30,000 level with a wick and things, and possibly again, even maybe some... Uh, daily close candles, but this is the key level I'm looking for. Roughly this kind of twenty-seven, twenty-eight thousand dollar level. If we go below that, and again, not a wick, proper daily close candles, uh, I will be worried. But again, the problem is it could fall really, really quickly. But for me, I'm just waiting to see if we're just going to consolidate sideways for some time. That is my overall perspective. That's what I think is going to happen. But I've been wrong before. I don't know it all. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, like I said, I'm just going to continue to dollar cost average into some really big plays. And once I see the market level out and then it's, you know, an obvious bottom where we've been traveling sideways for a while, that's when I'll start uh, buying into altcoins again. And look, if Bitcoin continues to travel sideways, you know, well into July, that's, you know, I will be getting into altcoins and you'll see altcoins start to move. Some altcoins are still moving right now. But it is troubling times, just be careful. We don't really know what's going on. We absolutely could go lower and we could go a whole lot lower. No one truly knows. But for me, I'm not too worried that we've had a couple of candles close outside of this Genwood, uh, general sort of uh, uptrend channel. That's happened before in bull markets. It's just, you know, whether we keep setting new lows. This was just a retest of an old low. We can see that's what happened. It still hasn't come and retested this, and it's not to say that it will, but look, just constant uh, sort of sideways action, I'm fine with that. All right, look, that's it for me. A bit of a long one today. Scary time in the market. I haven't panicked. I'm not, you know, selling anything. I am going to continue to buy. I generally don't sell, in all fairness. I generally just buy and hold. That's been my motto, and it's played well for me so far, but... As I said, you really have to be able to weather those uh, downturns. They hurt a lot, but once the upturns come, then you really start to you know, understand why uh, holding the good fundamental projects was worth it in the long run. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, congratulations to you. You've outplayed the market, and I'll see you next time.